uh, at the beginning of last year, we were um, the recipient of a huge gift of work from a former dealer and now collector. Um, Remind me his name. Anthony. My friend Anthony, his name just escaped me momentarily. And amongst the uh, 700 works that he donated to Tate as part of this Artist Rooms project that we share uh, with uh, Scotland, were a group of uh, works by Paul Sander, a, 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 a group of vintage, a portfolio of vintage prints, and then a group of prints uh, from the artist estate and printed by Gert Sander. And uh, what's interesting uh, that we had in the 1980s and 90s been acquiring recent uh, German work, um, uh, Struth, uh, Gersky, uh, and uh, Ruff. And in a way, uh, having the advent of a group of Sander uh, prints created a kind of um, a, a, a genealogy for that more contemporary work and that we're keen to build on. Um, Sander also, uh, as a, a, the serial nature of his work and the emphasis on portraiture, has opened up huge other areas of uh, thematic dialogue and reflection, uh, also amplified by uh, Anthony's gift of a, a wonderful group of works by Diane Argus, currently I think on view in Nottingham, or the other few weeks ago. So things that we might show over time alongside Sandra include this uh, fantastic portfolio of work uh, under the name of Akram Zatari, who is a Lebanese photographer who works with the Image Arab Image Foundation, and he has, is representing uh, the studio practice of a Lebanese photographer, Hashim Al Madani, um, uh, from his studio in Saida, and a group of photographs that cover several decades of really a, a portrayal of a self-portrayal of um, uh, the Lebanese, uh, local Lebanese population, subjects acting out their fantasies in the studio in lieu of acting out their fantasies in real life, a safe place in a dangerous world. Um, a group of works by uh, Singapore-born uh, photographer Simra Gill uh, of interiors of uh, domestic houses taken across Malaysia in the summer of 2001, currently on the Tate Modern. Uh, a, a group of uh, photographs by Boris Mikhailov entitled Red. And I think Mikhailov is an interesting example of the kind of photographer who in a way fits so well into uh, Tate's collection because uh, he's not only a socially engaged documentary photographer, but he's also, the work is so much taken up and engaged with the rhetoric of conceptual art. In each of these images, which are very hard-hitting um, portrayals of street life, um, each, uh, there's a formal device making each uh, work, which is a, um, a depiction of something in red, which is both a sort of formal, becomes a formal device, but also is a symbol of revolutionary uh, avant-garde in the Soviet Union and of course takes you right back to um, early 20th century um, Russian revolutionary art. Um, what I've been showing you are bodies of work, and I think uh, it's interesting that uh, we have taken a decision where possible not to buy a single vintage print to represent you know, a tiny little chink of an artist's practice, but for, to represent a body of work, uh, whereby you can see the, uh, the, the, the process of thinking, the conceptual nature of the practice over time through a number of different images. <coughs> um, so this is a, 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 a very recent acquisition and a gift from Michael and Jane Wilson, collectors who we've worked, worked very closely with. And this is a, a portfolio by uh, Bruce Davison, um, a, a group of images uh, taken from the subway series of the early 1980s and reprinted uh, with the help of Michael Wilson more recently. And finally, just come, to come back to Keith Arnott, um, I just thought it would be uh, it's, uh, in his memory to show you uh, two images from another series, from Walking the Dog of uh, the late 1970s, when Keith had moved on from his very uh, early conceptual practice. And uh, a personal anecdote was that, is that during the early 1990s, uh, and after Keith had had his exhibition at the Photographer's Gallery, which is entitled I think, Rubbish and Recoll uh, Recollections, I uh, made a proposal to uh, the then um, head of the collection that we should acquire a group of work from the exhibition. And uh, on the grounds that it was uh, not conceptual art, it was photography, um, the, the, the proposal was turned down. But uh, this year, um, uh, a group of younger colleagues uh, rediscovering Keith's work uh, in the, uh, uh, sadly after his death, 
uh, made a similar proposal to acquire a group of works, and uh, there was no question, um, 15 years old, 18 years old, that the Tate uh, should not acquire it. Um, so they've now entered the collection. Referring to uh, debates of earlier this morning, um, earlier this morning about uh, technical issues to do with uh, um, process and print quality, I think our position at the Tate is, um, of course we are extremely concerned by the longevity of prints and uh, because the collection exists in perpetuity and so the long-term stability of, um, of any work in any media is of interest. And yet at the same time, what we're really interested in is the intention of the artist and the intention of the artist at the moment they originated the work. So where an artist has worked with a, a fugitive material, as in the case of John Baldessari, we will, um, and, and the work is important and good, it's, it's the fugitive nature of the image will not stop us, prevent us from collecting the work. But what we will try and do is strive with our conservatives to find a way of both looking after that work and then work with the artist to find a way of uh, enabling the work to be seen in public. What is more challenging to us is when we acquire a work which is made in a particular way uh, and has a particular status and a particular meaning that, that derives from its um, technique. And then 10 years, 20 years down the line, the artist comes to us and says, I'm really not very happy with the way I made that. I'd like to remake it for you. And uh, this, is, this is the case that is now um, the case that we do have to uh, confront on a number of occasions. And, um, and it's then, then there is a really big decision to be made when the artist themselves, 30 years later, wants to do it in a different way. My own view, and what I've always tried to do when this case arises, is to, is to uh, respect the original intention of the artist. And uh, maybe it's something that we acquire a second version of it, but 20 years later, 30 years later, it is something different, and it has a different status, and it has a different materiality. So although we are um, uh, respectful of technique, and I, as, I, as I said earlier, to begin with, I'm not ignorant of technique, but I'm not a specialist. My role is to cover all media, and in all countries. So I have a very much a generalist, but we do have specialist knowledge, and we use that specialist knowledge. But what we're not in the business of doing is setting out uh, a kind of, um, uh, as indeed the, um, Martin was saying, the, um, who is it who just in France? The Ministry of Culture. The Ministry of Culture just said they won't be collecting secrets any longer. It's not something that we would ever consider doing. Were we to be asked by an artist for how we would like the work presented, were we were we ever in that position? I'm sure durability, longevity is something that we would want to mention, but it would not affect the outcome or our view of the, the nature of the work. We're principally interested in intentionality, content, conceptual status, those sort of things, rather than um, technical issues. Thank you.